Yo, how's it going? Today, I'm gonna to show you how to thin your paint properly. Now, for most people, when they start in the hobby or when they start trying to get serious about painting, at least, the advice that they're given very commonly is thin your paints. And that's, that's kind of it. And when you say, how would one thin my paint? You're just met with, bro, thin your paint. And you might ask, what do I thin my paint with? And again, the answer is, bro, thin your paint. And for a lot of people, that's all the information they get. But some people are treated to this gem of a phrase. Thin your paint to the consistency of milk. And at that point, <laughs> at that point, <laughs> you have to ask, what milk? Do you think they mean blue top, green top, gold top, purple top? Do you reckon they mean milk-based alternative? No, not milk-based. Not milk-based alternative. Do you think they mean something like this or this? Or maybe, just maybe, they mean chocolate milk or milk chocolate. What in milk? Over the course of this video, we are gonna find out if thinning your paint to the consistency of milk is the right thing to do. And if you stay till the end, you'll even see me painting with milk and airbrushing with milk. But predominantly, this video is gonna illustrate how to thin your paint the correct way, but importantly, for the job that you're doing. Check out the time codes right here. We're gonna be going through several different techniques in this video and to show you what consistency your paint should be for doing each of those techniques. Hopefully this helps you all out. But for each of these things, I'm gonna be explaining how to thin your paint down to that level and then how to apply that paint to the miniature. So bookmark this video, maybe even click the like button to add it to your liked videos list for future reference. And then jump to the time code that you want for the kind of paint that you're about to do. Let's get to it. All right, we're kicking it off with the base coats and we're just mixing in a little bit of Kador Red Base and some black from P3. You can use any good black and red for this kind of mix. This is just how I like to paint red, but you can do this with any paint. Now thinning your paint doesn't mean adding in a exact specific amount of water to paint. Every paint is a little bit different and what we need to do is tailor this to our miniature. Now we're gonna start off with showing you what it looks like if you paint without thinning your paint in the first place. So you can just get a difference between the two you can see why you're going to thin your paint so let's get that paint on the miniature and just slap it all over nice even coat of paint until we get up close you can see we've still got a bit of a base coat showing that's not the end of the world we know we can put another coat on to fix that but there's a visible texture showing here that we do need to do something about so let's thin our paint and paint the other part of the shoulder pad and while i'm doing this why don't you subscribe so I've just added in a little bit of water. You can see the difference on my palette now between the two, but most importantly, you can see the difference on my brush tip. The paint's fully incorporated into the bristles, the brush has kept its fine tip, and now we can use that on the miniature. So let's speed through this section. We'll let the paint dry, and then we'll compare the two surfaces. Once we've got all of this down, I'm sure there's gonna be a couple of differences, but let's just see where they are. So the first thing you'll notice is probably that the base coat is still showing through on both halves. In fact, it's showing through more so on our thinned paint side. That's kind of to be expected though, but there's no visible texture marks. You can see that very clearly. So to fix that, we know we just need to add in a second pass. We're gonna use the unthinned on the right and the thinned on the left, let those dry again, and then we'll come back. Once again, you can see that we've got no base coat showing on either now, this is great. You can also see there's no texture at all on the left. This is exactly what you want. 
Right, part two is metallics. So I'm going to show you that you can, in fact, thin metallics, and you can thin them with just water. I've prepped my palette with a couple of different metallics here. I'm going to use some of the gold right now. You can see how thick this is. The brush picks it up like a, a stick, basically. It's too thick to sit within the bristles. We'll take some of that paint off of the brush right now, and we'll paint one half of the chest eagle with it. Once we've done this, we'll come back and we'll paint the other half of the chest eagle with a thinned version of the paint. You'll be able to see the differences between the two. And as we've done with the regular base coat, we're only going to be thinning this with water. And look at the difference in consistency here. This is being picked up by the brush and it won't deform the bristles. That's really what you're looking for for any base coat. Your brush should be able to hold onto that paint. It shouldn't blow the bristles out. It shouldn't be sat on the outside of the bristles. It should be fully incorporated. So we've put a coat of paint over that half of the chest eagle now. And you can see that on the left half, which is the thicker half, we've actually got some mist bits showing through. That base coat hasn't got good coverage, but on the right it has this is exactly what you're looking for okay edge highlighting probably the most important one for getting your paint the right consistency other than base coats with this i'm just making a quick mix of a color that i need to do some highlights on the model we're using for our example here now i've got some fresh water on the palette and i've always got fresh water on the palette Almost every time before I take a brush stroke, in fact, I run my brush just through there to help keep the paint nice and thin. But you can see I'm using that to add to a small amount of our mix to ensure that I have paint there that is the correct consistency. I'm never gonna wanna mix everything in because it thins the paint out too much and actually speeds up the drying time. And I'm never looking to do that. Now, when you're using the brush and you're picking up the paint from your palette, you're looking for a couple of things. The first thing is that it picks it up without deforming the bristles. And the second thing is that paint is held inside the bristles, not on the outside. That means it's incorporated nicely into the brush. The brush keeps its very sharp tip. And it means that when you're on the miniature itself, you're putting your paint down and it flows nicely off of the brush. About 50% of brush control is having your paint the right consistency. Because if you do, you can use very light pressure. You have have more control over what you're doing and you can see just how easily that paint is flowing off of my brush onto even these small bits like the rivets on the underside of this area of the miniature. Now if you get your paint right everything will flow like this so you know what you're looking for but here's the things that you're not looking for and if you see results like this you know you need to change things. This is me putting on unthinned paint onto this model. Look at the sides of that edge highlight. They're really not very good. They're very wavy. They're all over the place. This is it at the correct consistency, the right thickness of paint. Yes, it takes two passes, as you can see, for a nice final line there. But look at how much smoother it is. It's actually a better highlight with more definition, despite the fact we've put it on twice. What if you over thin your paint though? Well, you're gonna end up with a result that looks very much like this. I'm taking some paint that as you can see is much closer to a glaze consistency here. And let's try putting that up over on the other shoulder pad. You can see that's not really working at all. If you start getting things like this happen where you get that tide mark on the miniature, your paint's too thin, you need to add a little bit more paint or just put a little less water in next time. Hopefully this all helps you out with your edge highlighting. So now it's on to glazing. And for me, this is one of the most important skills that you can learn as a painter. I'm taking some red and as you can see, I'm just thinning it down with water, but look at the behavior of the paint on the palette. Look at how it flows back together again. So I've thinned this out pretty heavily. As you can see, my paintbrush when dipped into it just wants to pick up the paint by itself. Now note, you can end up picking up way too much paint like this. And at this stage, it's blown out with because there's too much moisture on the brush. This will deposit a lot of that paint in one place on the model. It will give you tide marks. So let's just get rid of a lot of that, squeeze it out, wring it out onto the palette if you will, clean the brush out quickly and pick up a small amount of paint at a time. This is what you're looking for. The paintbrush should stay really sharp at the point because the brush has got the right amount of paint on it. Once you're ready, try it out on something like your thumb. For me, I like to use my thumbnail because it helps keep everything to the right consistency. I can see it very clearly. I can see straight through to my thumb. There's a slight hint of the color there that I've used and now I know I'm ready to get it on the model. Always work from the point of least impact to the point of most impact on the mini. So I've gone from the bottom to the top to build my glazed highlight up to the top of the mini. It's going to take several passes and you can see I'm drying it down with a hairdryer in between. It took around 12, I think, passes to get all of this done. But once you've put on all these coats of paint, once you've built up that 
ever so slight stage at a time opacity, you're gonna end up with a nice gradient from point A at the bottom to point B at the top. And this is what you're looking for in a glaze. There should be no texture, it should be nice and smooth, and there you are. That is how you glaze the consistency you need for it. Part five, stippling. Stippling uses a paint consistency that is ever so slightly thinner than glazing, or at least that's how I like to do it. So I've got some nice fresh water on the palette here. I'm gonna use that to mix in with the color that I've just mixed up to get me a nice, smooth, very thin set of paint to use. Now I'm gonna show you in a second the difference between this and the paint I've used for glaze. You can see there we've got the consistency of our glaze in the red. This is a little hard to see, I appreciate, but you can see the way it's coalescing back together on the palette. It's slightly thinner than that. And the reason for that is because you want the surface tension that the model has with the liquid that you've got in your brush to pull a little bit extra off your brush onto the mini. That's what's gonna leave these tiny deposits around, which is gonna allow for your stippling to work. So you can see here, we're just building it up over the mini. We can do several passes with this all in the same place because the paint is so thin, every other dot you put down helps build that little bit extra opacity, which is what gives us the effect. Now I'm using this to create texture, but you can do this to create any kind of effect that you want. You can even get some really nice transitions with this just by using the stippling effect. And here it is again. So I'm putting down a little bit of a stipple towards the top section of this leg. Because the paint is so thin, it pulls the paint off of the brush, leaving that extra deposit there. Once that dries in place with a tiny dot, it leaves the smallest amount of texture there, and that's exactly what we're looking for. That's exactly how you want to use your paint and thin it properly for stippling. Right, as a bonus tip, here's how to make a wet palette. This is instrumental for me in keeping my paint the right consistency. The first thing you need is a snap fit container. Now, obviously you can buy wet palettes, but for me, this is perfect for my desk. It's exactly the right size. I've then used a big car body wash sponge. You can see one of these big fat yellow ones. Because it doesn't sit at the bottom, which is where it needs to be, I've just taken a pair of scissors to it and trimmed off some of this edge. If it doesn't sit at the bottom, any water in the palette won't get picked up by the sponge, which will then move up the sponge sponge onto the bit of uh, parchment paper we're putting down and helping us out with that. So once you're happy that that fits nicely in the bottom of your container, easily enough, take some water, get it nice and wet. Now you want to squeeze the sponge and get it to pick up as much of this water as possible. But if there's too much left, just pour it out into your jug. Then take some kitchen paper, fold it so it fits the wet palette itself. And you see, I just fold it again to make sure it's got a nice fit, pop it over the top, and then again, just make that wet as well. I found the kitchen towel really helps to bring the water up to the top. It gives me a nice smooth surface as well for this to sit on top of, which is just some white baking parchment. And then simply, you can just snap it together and it's ready to go. Happy days, right? Enjoy your wet. Okay, so this was the bit I wasn't really looking forward to. This is painting with milk because everyone says, Thin your paint to the consistency of milk. And I feel that most people say it because they heard somebody say it once and it just sounds right to them. So let's get some on the palette, see what the viscosity is, see what the consistency is, and then we'll work from there. So let's have a quick look at the paint. It feels very thin. It feels much more like water than it does paint. So let's start making up something that's close to a glaze. As you can see, I'm using some red for this, and we're just gonna make sure we've got something that feels like it's about right. You see just how thin this is. This is actually about the same consistency as the paint we were using for stippling, if not ever so slightly thinner. Now I've then actually painted the mini with milk to see how it behaves on the mini coming from the brush just to ensure that my paint is as close to this consistency as possible. This isn't an entirely scientific test, as you can tell, but I just wanted to give it its fair due. Next, we'll put a pass of paint on. And as you can see, this is having very, very little effect. So let's do another couple. I think I ended up doing three passes with this by, by brush, by hand, essentially. And there was very little noticeable difference. Um, this paint is noticeably thinner than a glaze. So if somebody's saying thin your paint to the consistency of milk, unless you're glazing, don't do that. You can see it's even three passes. It's put the barest tint on this mini. So that's just bad advice. Stop saying that, people. Now... The bit I was really, really not looking forward to is putting it through the airbrush. Now I've made a glaze of red, essentially. I'm putting in 
two parts flow improver to one part paint, much thinner than I would normally tell people to paint. And the first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna just backflow the airbrush a little bit and see how those bubbles perform. Quick test pass. Let me see that the paint is coming out correctly. We'll do a couple of dots and we'll do a line. And then the test that we're gonna do is gonna hold down the trigger, but just back a little way and see how long it takes to spider web, which is where the paint sort of does this. So let's start the clock off. This is just red paint and flow improver, two parts flow improver to one part paint and bang. That took just over five seconds for that spider web to happen. So we're gonna do the same thing now with the milk. We'll do some test passes, see how the paint performs. We'll pull the trigger back to allow paint to flow out of the airbrush the same distance and we'll time how long that takes. Now, if the two match up, the viscosity is the same. And again, this paint is twice as thick as I would normally do. And oh my God, literally not even two seconds before that happens. Well, I guess that sells it. The consistency of milk has got absolutely nothing to do with your paint. So can we please stop saying that? I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget I stream four days a week over on Twitch, links in the description below, and also have weekly content uploads on Patreon, whether it's a written guide or a video guide, just like this one. Hopefully we'll see you in the streams. Peace out everyone.